Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Schaefer's Market Mashup. Monday, August 9th, and I'm thrilled to welcome back SIBO Global Markets. Today, we're going to discuss exchange traded funds or ETFs. You've probably heard of them, but not quite like this before. We're options focused at Schaefer's, of course, and today we're breaking down a special kind of options contract flex options or defined outcome ETFs. And joining me is Bruce Bond, co founder and CEO of Innovator Capital Management. Bruce, how's it going? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Bruce co-founded PowerShares Capital Management back in 2003, and he is a trailblazer, pioneer, however you want to word it, uh, in the ETF industry. And joining me also is Bill O'Keefe, Director of Derivative Sales at SIBO Global Markets. Bill, how's it going? Very well. Thanks for having me. Bill works with clients to help them find suitable risk management and investment tools to protect their assets. So we're going to talk ETFs and for the record, guys, I'm going into this relatively fresh and new. I'm joining you, dear listener, in learning about this. So I want to start very basic. Bruce, you can go first. Uh, tell us about how these ETFs work and how they use SIBO's flex options for investors. And then further to that, how do SIBO's flex options differ from a standard options contract? So. Just to give you guys a sense of uh, what the ETF is and how simple it is, if you were interested in purchasing the S&P 500, but you thought that the market itself just had too much risk in it for you, so maybe you're staying in cash or maybe you know, you're using some other approach, you're in bonds or something like that, you can look, use these to get exposure to the S&P 500 with a downside buffer. And a downside buffer is just the downside, you have protection on the downside at a certain limit. So we have three different products you can participate in with the S&P 500 that have a one-year outcome period. So real simple, you can get a 9% buffer, that's from 0 to 9%. You can get a 15% buffer, that's from 0 to negative 15%. And then you can also get a 30% buffer, and that's from negative 5 to negative 35. So if you bought in and you said, hey, I need a 9% downside buffer. Then you also have a cap on performance of about 13% right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so the way for you to think about it is I can buy the S&P 500. I get 13% of the upside, but if the market goes down uh, anywhere between zero and nine, I'm not going to lose anything. If it goes down more than nine, I'm going to lose whatever is down more than nine. So if it's down 10, you're going to lose one. If it's down 12, you're going to lose three, that type of thing. So it's really that simple. Same thing for the 15 percenter and the, thir uh, the 30 percenter. So you can feel comfortable getting into the market, staying invested. And then in one year, it just resets and it gives you another 9 percent buffer. And you get whatever the cap is at that time on the upside. And it's as simple as just going to the Innovator website calling your advisor or whatever, however you find out these kind of things and just say, okay, what is my current buffer on the current term? And then you can find out what your buffer is. You'll know that if you bought the 915 or 30 and what is your cap, the new cap set by the marketplace. Okay. That's interesting stuff. Bill. Yeah. You know, so flex options are fully customizable. Uh, typical standard options uh, have set, uh, have set strikes, you know, in full points, and they have uh, set expiration dates going out to maybe about two years, but very infrequent after about the first seven or eight months. Um, a lot of the serial expirations, which is the classic uh, third Friday of the month, is an AM seller product. Mm -hmm. So that, that's not going to be uh, you know, good for this kind of a product here. And Bruce is talking about these buffers. Um, because you can define the strike price as well using Flex, you, know, you can go on two decimal points on a fixed strike, or you could, uh, on the day these are seated, in the example with today, the BAUG, which is uh, the nine percent buffer, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the thirteen percent cap. So you would do an option strategy a year out from the day it was seated, probably with July, end of July, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. end of July last day. Right. right. So that would be as executed like a, as a buffer would be a put spread, hundred percent put. Sell the ninety-one percent put. There's your nine, and then they would sell the one hundred thirteen percent out of the money call, or the thirteen percent represents the cap. 
then the uh, the exposure would be a deep in the money call, and uh, that's uh, you know, what you can do with uh, with the flex options. Um, and the expiration go up to 15 years, any day you want, except weekends and holidays, obviously. So they match pretty much all the conventions that the over car markets have, and, uh, and that's about it. Oh, then you could also change uh, American to European style exercise. Most equity names are American, meaning that you can be assigned or exercised on these things uh, without warning. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, a, a European is only exercised at the end of the contract, and that's uh, that keeps the integrity of the options uh, strategy intact. I think that's a very important distinction between the American and the European, and broadly, it sounds like this is a pretty effective means of a retail trader, especially if they want to get into options, of dipping their toe into the water and kind of making sense of the terrain a little bit. Uh, I, I think it's a really interesting component of an investment strategy. Bruce, I'll stick with you here a little bit. Innovator was um, one of the first movers in this defined outcome space. I think you guys just celebrated your three-year anniversary this month. Happy birthday, if so. Uh, I mean, you're, you're a trailblazer. So walk us through the growth you've seen in the past three years with these ETFs. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Well, we, uh, uh, like you mentioned, Pat, three years ago, we bought the first ones, and that was the 9 and the 15 and the 30. We added the 30 a little later, but all three came within the month. And uh, since then, we've introduced another 60-some-odd ETFs, and we have a little over $5 billion in assets within just the defined outcome category. And an interesting point to you said, people that are interested in getting into options, you know, one of the reasons people participate in these, at least advisors around the country that are using them, uh, at some of the biggest uh, wirehouses, only 3% we, this is the number we've been given by them. Only 3% of those advisors are actually allowed to use options. They're approved for options. So mm -hmm. if, if you're not familiar with options, exactly how they work, and you want to weigh in and kind of get a feel for how to use them to, uh, cre you know, to create hedges within your portfolio, this is a great way to get a sense of how they work and what components uh, are part of that to make them up and make up the strategies. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So why were defined, defined outcome ETFs such a groundbreaking concept three years ago? Was there some tech paradigm shift? Uh, and, and how did this change the retail landscape or uh, just the investing landscape for retail investors? Yeah, you know what? It really did. I think the, one of the biggest reasons that it did that, if you, if you think of what most people have to invest in, if they're looking at managing risk down the road, it usually deals with components of switching back and forth, you know, between equities or switching from equities to cash or debt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's all these switching strategies, all these management strategies usually are back tested. And, you know, coming from a guy that has introduced tons of ETFs to the market and other types of financial products, you know that the bank, they don't necessarily always work in the future like they did in the past. You know, they may look great on paper, but then when you go to put them into practice, all of a sudden they don't work. And a lot of investors and advisors know that. What they love about these products and using options is they give you a prescribed future outcome. So you know with the 9%, for example, I need to be in the market. I, I'm comfortable with 13% on the upside, and I love knowing that I have that 9% uh, buffer on the downside or 15% on the downside with a little less on the upside. And what that allows them to, to know it's the knowledge of that future outcome. Whereas almost of every other risk management tool that you have available to you, it depends on correlations and it depends on all these other things. Here, you have the knowledge of what it will be in a year. And then also another big benefit to these is that they reset automatically. So it just continues to give you a 9% buffer every year against the downside of the market and a certain amount of the upside, depending on what the market's doing at the time. And that's what advisors love about this. That's it's not available in the in the ETF industry today, and it's only available in little pockets, typically for very wealthy people to access these kinds of investments. And so, what this has done is brought it down to retail, so that they can access it directly in a very you know efficient framework, the ETF at a low price. So, and and you know, 
it is possible for options, uh, guys that want to weigh into options, do this on their own, but it's very efficient to do it through the ETF structure. And to add to that, you know, this is a structured product built into a, an ETF wrapper. As Bruce eloquently explained, the 9% buffer and the 13% uh, cap. I mean, try to explain, you know, the whole options piece, the four-legged spread mm-hmm. to somebody. They'd be, what, what? <laughs> and now you put yeah. into this point-and-click product. And if you become uncomfortable with it, you could either switch to other uh, products that they have at this week because the innovator has a dozen, uh, you know, 12 months worth of these t- various buffers and uh, cap strategies all around. So, and if, you're, if you get comfortable or, in- or uncomfortable, you could simply sell it out or buy it in or what have you. So it's just like trading a stock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I got into this four years ago, and, and this would have been a great introduction for me, you know, as, as I learned about options and, and I'm going through all of our sites, extensive options 101, all the different types of contracts and everything. And, and this just seems like a lot more palatable options starting out. And I, I really think that flexibility cannot be understated. Uh, so I want to stick with you here, Bill. Um, the whole idea about democratizing, you know, sophisticated option strategies, like I just implied, putting it into an ETF wrapper, that's very, very interesting to me. Um, other than ETFs, what else are flex options being used for the benefit of, of investors? Yeah, you know, for example, index annuities. Uh, if somebody wants to buy an uh, annuity product, you hear it advertised, hey, your principal's protected, but you have some exposure to the uh, underlying. So, for example, uh, what they do if the annuity comes in with a bunch of money, usually the company would cohort all the funds and make a larger trade. They would uh, gather this money, they would invest in a zero coupon bond. The uh, annuitants or the clients would not participate in the credit of the interest rate anymore. That would go to the insurance company and they would use that to buy optional. In my example, they would buy an at the money call on the day of seating, you know, 100% call, sell some cap, uh, maybe 3.75%, so they'd sell a 10375 call. And that would be, uh, in, you know, in, for, in motion for about 12 months exactly to the date, similar to what uh, Bruce is doing here at Innovate. And, you know, again, the most you can make is the 3.75 cap. But in an interest rate environment, I mean, you're competing against uh, you know, fixed income. Maybe that's attractive. Maybe it's not. But uh, but your money is safe in that in that example. Other issue, areas we're seeing growth, and I, I credit it a lot to what's going on in Innovator, has been some of the resurgence in UITs. Now, UITs, for the most part, were done over the counter. We're seeing a lot coming using the flex market. It's probably on the coattails of the innovative products. Um, and UIT is very similar. It's a structured product, look alike, a buffer, a cap, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, an, an exposure. But the only difference is it's, it's not tradable. You're in for it, it trades in one day, money comes in one day, and only goes out in expiration. The other thing most recently is interesting uh, to me is in the insurance space, the variable annuity. Well, they're trading rupees called VITs, which is variable insurance trust. Again, it's very similar in structure to what we're talking about today, cap and buffer. Um, in this case, it is tradable, but based on the NAV, uh, once a day at the end of the day, like a, pretty much like exactly like a mutual fund. Um, and lastly, we're seeing a lot of uh, high net worth individuals that have a lot of a concentrated stock, you know, several hundred thousand shares of a particular name. They want to write calls on it, but if they write an American call on it and it goes through that strike, it, they could be a, 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 you know, assigned on it. And they can have that stock taken away, and that you know, that could create all sorts of tax issues for them. So what they like to do is use a, 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 a European call style option, um, sell that call, write that call against it, and uh, at a certain strike out of the money. And uh, knowing that if it, if it goes through that price, there's nothing they can do. They don't have to have the stock taken away. They just have to pay the difference if there is a, a, you know, a loss. Um, so it's very efficient. We're seeing a lot of that come into the market now as well. Okay. Bruce, did you have anything you wanted to chip in there? No, I think the, the only other thing I would would add to this, um, you know, discussion is SIBO obviously is at the forefront of all this, and flex option, you know, the 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 um, really the explosion that occurred within you know our product category was really the coming together of these two technologies, one flex options and ETFs as well as the knowledge of how to combine those into an ETF. And I, I think that's what had never been done before, that Innovator figured out how to do. But without the flex options, we wouldn't re- really be able to do it nearly as efficiently as we can mm-hmm. because we, we'd like to start right on the first day of the month and end the last day of the previous month in the next year. So it's exactly 12 months long. 
Because of that, we can be very, very precise with the flex options on when they start, when they end, exactly the strikes we want, and it makes the product work very well. And without the flex, we wouldn't really be able to achieve that at nearly the uh, level the de- of detail that we'd like to have the products on. Okay. And hopefully one thing, too, with that is, you know, like we talk in percentage terms, the nice thing about flex, you can trade in a percent term. Um, you know, when you see the trade, you'll have, like I, I kind of explained, 100% foot, 91 foot, you know, 1% call, let's say, for the exposure and uh, 113 cap. You trade it that day only. Then at the end of the day, when you get your cash close or your, or your market close, you'll get these uh, fixed strike, numeric strike, to two decimal points. And uh, each leg of this uh, defined outcome strategy will be defined as a, as a fixed strike, and that will last for the entire duration of the 12 months. Okay. So if you want to trade or redeem, those same options are being traded back and forth to those same strikes. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, one thing too, Pat, I could maybe add to that, and, and, and Bill is probably better to speak to this than I am, but this is a fully funded strategy. It funds itself. And I think that's something probably very interesting to your listeners that, you know, there are, other than the cost of the management of the ETF that you have to pay the innovator to put it out and manage it and all, the, the options package itself funds itself. And that's what is so intriguing and what keeps the cost so low for investors on this particular product. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that that's incredibly important. Um, so I want to expand a little bit with, a, with some macro talk here. Um, highly valued equity markets, ultra low bond yields, volatility through the roof, uncertainty abound. Uh, you know, for investors that want yield and income, it's it's fine line to toe. How can these defined outcome strategies help? Bruce, you can take this one and then Bill can follow up. Yeah, no, I'd love to. You know, at Innovator, we've been talking for a while now that we think that the fixed income markets actually have more risk in them Mm -hmm. than they have reward. And we're encouraging people to consider the buffers as an alternative because there really are very few alternatives for people in the marketplace if they want to rotate out of fixed income, out of bonds themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They look at bonds as the really the only safe investment for them out there. And when we explain to them that you can actually move into the equity markets and have a prescribed amount of buffer on the downside and understand what your upside is, you may have a much better risk return scenario on your hands using the buffer ETFs than you do in bonds today. And I can give you a really quick example for myself. Um, We have a portion of our own personal portfolio that was in bonds. And back when COVID hit and the market crashed and the government went to zero on, uh, you know, the the short term rates, Mm -hmm. that's when I realized there's little to no upside left in bonds. So we sold uh, everything we had in bonds and we moved it into the nine and the 15% buffer at that time. Okay. Well, you can imagine there's been no upside yeah. in bonds since then, but in the SMB 500, you know, there's been significant upside. So we participated in the upside of that. So, and, and, you know, when the market crashed, one important thing to know too about the buffers is that your cap expands, that volatility expands your cap. So not only did in the crash, did we have a buffer about going down lower, but we also had a big cap to take advantage of. So we made significant amount of money on that trade as we moved out of bonds. Now bonds tend to still be in that place today, you know, where you're not going to, there's not much more upside left in your bonds. And, and if you're super short, you hold cash. You, you just got a big weight yep. is all you're holding. Right. You have to figure out where to move to. So that's a big example of what we did. And what I think people should be thinking about today. Okay. Very well said. Bill? Yeah, I think by the nature of this a sophisticated options strategy, these defined outcome points, is it, it, dampen, it dampens the volatility. So it takes a lot, it shakes a lot of the uh, uncertainties out of it. When you look at a, a market today where, it, you know, basically it's run all time highs, if you're sitting on the sidelines, like, you know what, I don't want to miss any more of those upside, but how much more is there? These buffers are perfect because you know thirteen mm-hmm. percent is still very is a, is a very good uh, return. But now you have the caveat of having like a buffer there. So if you're wrong a little bit, you know it's okay. Yeah, I mean it's a it's it's a, it's a, it's a great it's a great uh, tool to have in your re- repertoire to play this kind of a market. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we're telling bu- uh, boomers 
you know, baby boomer, <laughs> that they're in the they're in a risk zone right here. You know, they yeah. they they can't really afford to lose too much of their assets because they don't have time to make it back. Mm-hmm. So it's important to have a buffer in there to, to you know to keep your assets up, especially if you're taking money out of your savings. You don't want to be doing that when the market's down. Okay. So if that's your message to boomers as a fellow millennial, what is both yours message to, uh, to, to us? Well, I think my message to you is we have, uh, depending on where you are in your investing and where your risk tolerance is, you know, I have some of my son-in-laws, you know, that are millennials and they, they want some of their assets safe and they want to play risky with some of their assets. And so what I would say is, Go for it on the risky assets, but instead of investing in bonds today, buy a buffer. It still will give you a significant amount of the upside of the market, and at the same time, you can have your real risky assets over there and shoot for the moon for those where you have more time in case you do get hurt by the market, you have time to make it back. And that's what I would encourage you to think about. Your 60-40 might think of more, uh, you know, 40 in the buffers, 60 in, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, higher alpha type opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. Bill? I would agree with Bruce. I mean, you know, the younger people, they, they want some stability as well. I mean, they're not all gung-ho in GameStop and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, that's fun and it's great. And, you know, it was a nice three-month run, but that's not reality. The reality is you got to have a nest egg. And the sooner you can start, the better. And these are perfect tools for that. And still have the funds because you got the age uh, you know, going your way to play the aggressive uh, games. Mm-hmm. Yep. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's, it's the best of both worlds, right? Right, right. No, that, that's outstanding. Bruce Bond, co-founder and CEO of Innovator Capital Management. Uh, what is that specific website? Just so the listeners can plug that in after they're done yeah. here. Uh, Innovator ETFs ETFs dot com. Perfect. So, nice and easy. And then yep. Bill O'Keefe, director of derivative sales at Cebo Global Markets. You want to give your uh, plug your website as well, just to. Sure www.cboe.com. It's that simple. There's a lot of tools in there to, uh, to look up all sorts of things, products, indexes, and a lot of learning. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I've i perused them both. It's it's outstanding stuff, and it's exciting to see what you guys have been working on. Couldn't thank you enough for coming on, both of you, Bruce, Bill. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.